They are statues you'd expect to see in a world-class museum in a world-class city, but they're tucked away right here in little old Albuquerque in a place no one would expect, and no one's coming to get them. News 13's Larry Barker now with an investigation that reveals how the city of Albuquerque wound up in the middle of this international intrigue. They are symbols of wealth and power, priceless treasures steeped in mystery, created half a world away by faceless artisans. These rare stone monoliths once adorned the palatial tombs of Asian imperial rulers. Today, they are hidden away in Albuquerque. Where are they? Well, think of it as a treasure hunt of sorts, and you start down this trail, past the lake, through the woods, across this garden, Inside this nondescript building is a massive treasure trove of forbidding artifacts. Welcome to the city of Albuquerque's Biopark. Valued at tens of millions of dollars, these ancient relics are stored behind locked doors off limits to the public. And even though they have been at the Botanical Garden for eight years, nobody knows where they came from or why they're here. Catherine Hubbard is in charge. We don't have any information about them. Catherine is not alone. You see, the historical record surrounding these carvings is murky at best. In fact, if the statues could talk, they would weave a tale of mystery and intrigue worthy of an Indiana Jones adventure. We can trace them all the way back to the great Ming Dynasty. These marble sculptures once adorned sacred temples in Imperial China. And during the Cho Sun Dynasty, these granite warriors would have stood guard over the tombs of Korean emperors. However, during the Japanese occupation of China, these precious antiquities disappeared. They reappeared in 1937 in Japan, having been, quote, acquired by a Japanese art collector. In 1961, the statues were on the move again, having been sold to a Japanese landscape architect, Hitoshi Hoshi. Mr. Hoshi displayed the ancient artifacts at the foot of Mount Fuji on the grounds of Japan's National Cemetery. Next stop for the rare antiques, New Mexico. Mr. Hoshi had been here a couple of times and fell in love with the land of enchantment. In an arrangement with then Albuquerque Mayor Marty Chavez, the wealthy Japanese businessman decided to loan his collection of 16 Chinese and Korean sculptures to the city of Albuquerque. We were told they were uh, a gesture of friendship uh, with uh, Hoshi and uh, that they were on loan to us for two years. So in the fall of 2006, 85 tons of carved stone was crated in Japan and loaded on the MSC Loretta for the voyage to America. It was a big deal to get, to get them here. They came on a flatbed truck, they were crated, and we got a forklift to get them off the, the truck, and then we had to take down some of the windows in our showroom to get them in. The mayor held a ceremony to thank Mr. Hoshi for his generous loan. Relics that once graced the tombs of mighty imperial emperors and rested in the shadow of Mount Fuji now sat at the foot of Mount Sandia. However, after Mayor Chavez left office in 09, the statues were taken off public display. There were just too many troubling questions. For example, even though Mr. Hoshi values this art collection at $91 million, it's apparently not insured. So if the statues are somehow damaged while here at the Biopark, Albuquerque taxpayers could be on the hook to restore them. But is the city carrying these uh, sculptures on its insurance policy? Not that I'm aware of. Do you know if Mr. Hoshi has these insured? I, I don't know. I've not had a lot of contact with Mr. Hoshi. In fact, there is virtually no paperwork in city files documenting the art loan. However, one piece of paper caught our attention. In this 2007 memo to then Mayor Marty Chavez's office, Mr. Hoshi asked the city to loan him $15 million so that he could buy and develop this piece of property in Santa Fe County. Now, Mr. Hoshi offered his 
Asian art collection as collateral for the 18-month loan. The proposal was rejected. So why is this rare Asian art collection in a Southwest Botanical Garden? We don't know, and neither does the city. How do these sculptures fit into the mission of the biopark? Well, that is part of the reason they are not on display, is that they don't fit in with our mission. Well, wouldn't these sculptures be appropriate for the Japanese garden? No, because they're Chinese and Korean. When they first came, we were you know, excited to be a part of this gesture of friendship, and we just feel like they just don't belong in our botanic garden. Hitoshi Hoshi has refused repeated requests to take back his multi-million dollar art collection. The current administration has been trying since uh, 2010 uh, consistently and persistently to make contact with the owners of the sculpture and has tried to get them relocated. Why are they still here? Well, they're 100 tons all together. So it's a, it's a real effort to, to get them out. I'm not sure, you know, from Hoshi's end, why they are still here. Now, Mr. Hoshi has put the historic sculptures up for sale through an international art gallery. However, prospective buyers have shown little interest due to Mr. Hoshi's asking price and accusations the artifacts may have been looted from ancient tombs. Leon Natger is a UNM grad student with expertise in Chinese archaeology. Without knowing where they came from, who paid for them, were they sold legitimately to the collector, no museum would want to have them in the collection because they would, they may in fact belong to China. We don't know. Is there documentation showing the tomb carvings were legally collected? We don't know. The period of the 1930s and of the Japanese occupation is still, it's a, it's a very sensitive issue. There is no museum with a, a truly legitimate reputation that is going to want to say, oh sure, we're going to buy these without having real documentation about where they came from and who really has the right to their ownership. In January, Mr. Hoshi will celebrate his 100th birthday. An associate says the Tokyo-based businessman is trying to raise money to return his art collection to Japan. Meanwhile, a room full of precious Asian artifacts sit in storage at the Albuquerque Biopark gathering dust. It bothers me as somebody involved in the museum world that there is no authoritative answer to, you know, where did these come from? Do we know when they were made, how they were acquired? All of that information is, is what will make them valuable for purposes of research and for purposes of display. The sculptures are here, they have been here for several years, and it's like, uh, I guess it's overstayed their welcome. Basically, you're just storing the sculptures for free. Yes, we are. Just to move the sculptures out of this building and off city property will cost an estimated $60,000. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13. Well, to get a closer look at where the artwork has traveled and how it landed here in Albuquerque, we have it all online. Just go to krqe.com.